So our friend is here today. He wasn't able to be here yesterday, but he is here today, Bill Lockwood. And he is one of the most smartest white men on this side of heaven. And Lord, no, I'm telling the truth. Bill Lockwood, a writer, radio host at American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. He's a teacher in Wichita Falls, Texas, and a preacher at Our Park Church of Christ. And one of Maze, Maze's best friends. <laughs> Good morning, Bill. Welcome, to, welcome back. Well, thank you so much, Jesse, for having me. Good to be with you today. Yes, sir. Um, how was your Christmas? Well, we went down to Montgomery. You know, my brother lives down in Montgomery. Right. And, um, you know, we uh, during Thanksgiving, remember, I don't know if you remember, my wife was sick. She had COVID, and we were in the hospital Thanksgiving Day. Well, she, she got sick again down there in Montgomery, so we were at uh, Mediquick. Um, Thanksgiving Eve, I mean uh, Christmas Eve, and so it was. It was a, uh, it was kind of a quiet th uh, Christmas period. We had a good time down there, but it was, uh, you know, uh, some nurse made activities and trying to keep her well. And then we, when we made the drive, of course, it was a long drive. So, um, but we were happy to be with family, so that was nice. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. How is she doing? Oh, she's recuperating. She's uh, hanging in here this week and doing better and better. Uh, but she, she's supposed to go back to work next week, so we're hoping she'll be uh, up and ready running next week. So we have a few more days to really strengthen her up. Right on, man. Well, she's I wish well you well long haul. I wish her well. Yeah, well, thank you for that, Jesse. Yes. So, so how, how are you doing? Amazing. Uh, my Christmas was quiet. I didn't do a lot. I just wanted that quiet time to kind of stay home yeah. and did a few things around the house and all that kind of stuff. Well, good for you. I'm glad you're able to do that. You need quiet time since you're so busy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. So I, I want the people to know it's, ra it's raining over there right now, right, out in Texas? Yes, sir. It is. It's coming down pretty good. It's overcast and raining and um, just one of those uh, inside days, stay inside days. Yeah. And so I wanted the folks to notice because we're getting a static light in your, oh yeah, in your uh, yeah. thing there, and it's due I, to the to the weather. Right, right. I wondered about that. I'm sorry about that. Oh no problem. So Bill, I wanted to talk to you about the country is so divided now, and Rush Limbaugh mentioned secession, and I want to talk about good and evil. So a lot of stuff to go over today. This past election has revealed the deep division in America. What's your impression about all that? Well, you know what I've, I've been saying for a long time, we're, we're more divided now than we were during the Civil War period. Um, because in the Civil War period, even though, that they, um, even though there were uh, deep divisions regarding the culture, uh, regarding um, taxation, and, uh, and even slavery, even though all those things existed, people still generally had a worldview that believed in God. And so they may have disagreed on how that would work out, but nevertheless, they still had a worldview that was biblically based. Today, we are facing a division uh, in which the other side is not, are atheistic in orientation, even if they may not say it. The socialistic and communistic, and many churches have really gone down the socialistic route, and they're, they're basically megaphones for socialism, which is an atheistic worldview to begin with. Uh, and that's what uh, Warnock's all about, for example. Well, he may preach in an Ebenezer Baptist church, but he's all about communism and socialism, which is born and bred in the stalls of atheism. So. That's the kind of division that we have in our country, and it's not these these this division is not going to be healed by um, I don't think any any particular president or any particular philosophy. Um, so I don't I don't see any any coming back from the division that we have. I personally don't, and I think we need to go a different route. Um, Secession number one.
<laughs> number one. And yeah. I want to ask, and then ask about the secession. Uh, so Warnock is that black guy down in Georgia that's running for Senate, right? Yes, sir, that's correct. Th that right. guy is obviously such a socialist, just a bad guy. And yes, he's right. not good for America. Why is it that the people are voting for him anyway? They seem to support him anyway. You know what? Uh, the American people have been brainwashed, whether it be through uh, public school systems or whether it be in the university systems, uh, whether it be in the entertainment industry. Uh, we've had nothing but a bombardment of socialistic, communistic ideas uh, for a long, long time. So we put up Barack Obama in the White House. How can a man whose political career started and ended with the Bill Ayers and communists of the world and, uh, and Muslim socialists, how could that have got into the White House? Well, because the American people have been brainwashed to an alarming degree. And it was just a breath of fresh air to have a Donald Trump. So that's what's going on with Warnock. You know, Jesse, 100 years ago, even a little over 100 years ago, there were many people in the period of Woodrow Wilson who, uh, in the churches, uh, many of the larger churches, such as the Methodist Church, uh, they, had been, they had been brought down the pathway of socialism, and they had had uh, socialism uh, infused into their theology so much so that many of them became firebrands for socialism and communism, and you find that many of the preachers were that way. So that was a that was a, a hundred years ago, and that's still going on. And that's exactly where Warnock is. He just he's ignorant of, of socialism, communism, and he's ignorant of the Bible both. But but nevertheless, that's but people are ignorant too. So he's a reflection of the people. What is it about socialism that make a lot of people or cause a lot of people to believe? It's the right thing to do because I hear a lot of just like now for capitalism and a lot of promotion of socialism. What is it about that lifestyle or whatever that make people believe it can work and that is good? Other than the brainwashing, because well, you look at it, it doesn't look like anyone. It's really about control. And I would think correct. that no, most people would not want to be controlled by someone else and especially by our government. What is it about it that made people think it's good? Well, it goes right down to religious roots. And they have uh, socialism uh, at its taproot rejects the idea that mankind is a free moral agent and that sin is the root of his problem. Instead, socialism believes that economics or lack thereof, lack of, uh, lack of financial freedom, lack of um, opportunities in society, that this is the problem it, that caused men to act evil or act wickedly. So all of the problems that we're seeing in society, they say is traceable to the fact of people who are downtrodden and poor and don't have opportunities. So yeah. the way to correct it is to level the playing field and that way you'll have a peaceable society. That of course is the devil's lie and so they also, uh, many people say, well, if you're not for socialism, if you're not for the welfare system, for example, you're a very hard-hearted person, See, un seemingly so ignorant of the fact that a welfare system is not my kind-heartedness. It's not the government's kind-heartedness. It's no one's kind-heartedness. It's a redistribution program. Kind-heartedness on my part and love on my part is free will giving. I see the needs of individuals and I take care of them. It has nothing to do with a government redistribution program. But so many people, even in the Christian communities, have bought into the devil's lie that all of this is about some kind of Christian giving and so that we need to redistribute from an authoritative state somehow all of the uh, benefits and profits in society to make them equal. And that, that is, number one, it's a lie, but number two, it never has worked. And so one of the lies that they continue to propagate is they want to compare some of the problems of capitalism, which is really freedom. And there yeah. are some problems. There's always going to be problems in society. They compare the problems there with the workings of capitalism with the ideal of what socialism is supposed to be. They don't, it doesn't work out that way, and it never has in any society. 
So that's uh, that's another lie by which they propagate socialism. I noticed that, and there have been several reports that married women voted against uh, their husband this time around, and single women voted for Biden. Is uh, do women tend to go for socialism more so than men? Well, I don't, I don't know about uh, whether that's true or not, whether women are more susceptible to socialism um, than men. It may, it may be the case because it does, it does include the facet that the government is going to take care of you. And once if people get into the mode that someone else makes their decisions, their life decisions for them, my, my retirement savings account, Social Security, my, my uh, health care, then, then that leaves me free to do what I want to do, and I don't, I'm not as responsible. So it, it removes responsibility from an individual. And whether or not that's more susceptible to a woman than a man, I am not certain, really. But it, it, I think it's just general ignorance in the people that what, what's actually occurring. When I was growing up, uh, you know, relying on the government was never even thought of. It was about family right. and hard work and... If someone needed help, you know, we would help out, but it wasn't to uh, damage them, keep them in that need. It was to help them through it. And then the so-called civil rights movement came along, and they removed the man from the home, the black man from the home. And then they were able to usher in socialism by causing the blacks to rely on the government. And, if, and I'm thinking that if the men had stayed in the home, that would not have happened. But the women, the black women at the time, and, and even today, were the one that accepted the government handouts. And so that's why I asked, and I noticed in the churches, in order to bring in socialism, you have to take the man out of the church. You have to take him out of the schools. You have right. to take him out of the government. So that's why I ask, is it, is it, does, do women tend to lean toward that more so than men? Because if men well, were in charge, I don't know if that would happen so easily. Well, that's true. If men would take charge, if men would um, step up to the plate, that's probably true, and lead their families. You know, what, one thing about the civil rights movement, of course, everybody appreciates uh, the civil rights that all have, you know, whether whatever race a person is. But one of the huge, huge mistakes of that uh, whole era was that we look to the federal government to set the, to set the record straight. And once that began, now the federal government becomes the father, and it yeah. becomes the decision maker for everybody, oversteps the boundaries of the states and state sovereignty and individuals. Instead of allowing the states to do it, the, the federal government took charge of all of that. Of course, they, that's what they wanted to do anyway. The federal government was taking charge from the time of Woodrow Wilson and they and they the so-called progressive era is nothing less than a socialistic era uh, era in which government federal government was going to take charge of every aspect of society and the civil rights something needed to be done but now the problem is the federal government's taking that over yeah. and so that now the black community looks to the federal government for everything because the federal government's the one who saved them but isn't that the same Supposedly. as isn't that the same as socialism? Yes, it is. That's right. I mean, it, it, uh, uh, that's right. So, that's what it is. It is socialism, where the federal government becomes so big and, and manipulative and then starts rearranging the table as the federal government wants to see fit. So during the period of Lyndon Johnson, that's all that it was. It's not, and and the, the, the people of Lyndon Johnson's uh, cabinet, they knew... And they even said it was socialism. They knew this was socialism. Uh, there are many people who are involved in Johnson's great society, and they, they actually worded some things differently to avoid the socialistic tag because there were so many people in America that were savvy to socialism and didn't want to go that route. Yeah. So they reworded it in order that people might be able to swallow it down. And they did, and that's exactly what happened. So then my concern is, since I noticed that you have to remove a man for the most part to bring in socialism, this election brought in a lot of women 
in uh, in government, especially on the Republican side. The Democrats are already doing it. But the Republican men were celebrating that so many women are in Congress and and those things. Yeah. Um, now that all those women are there, isn't it easier for this country to become a, a socialist country? Well, I think the thing, the thing that's causing my concern on that is that we are not celebrating constitutionalists as much as we're celebrating whether a person is black or whether a person is Hispanic yeah. or whether a person is a woman. We seem so intent on getting a woman in there or a minority in office, and that is a second rate to consider where does that person stand? How strong are they stand? We should be thinking about their constitutional leadership abilities instead of their gender and their race. But we're thinking race first, gender first, yeah. and then we think about the constitutional issues. And I think that's a that, of course, is always a danger signal for us. Amazing. You know, uh, when President Trump won the first time around here, the Democrats were so angry. And in California, they were talking about secession. They wanted to get away. They wanted to break off and become his own identity. And the Republicans and others were saying, no, that was not going to happen. And now, now that it looked like the uh, Democrats have tried to steal this election, and they think that Biden has taken over, Republicans now are talking about secession. We're not talking about it, but it's been thrown around. Is it possible for something like that to happen in this country? Well, I don't know why it would not be. I, I don't, uh, I, on the details of such a move, I don't know all of the details and how things work out. I had a man tell me the other day, how about all the pensions that we have? And, you know, people would be concerned about the Social Security that the federal government's got and all of the federal benefits that they're going to be losing in such a move. But secession has happened. For example, in the Civil War, West Virginia broke off from Virginia, seceded from the state. And America itself was founded upon this principle of secession. That is, a people have a right to live free by the principles that God gave us and infused us, and that would be freedom, and a right to avoid the slavery and the tyranny that big government always brings. And people have a right before God to do that. So in principle, I believe it's perfectly legitimate to secede and to have that as far as working it out, I'm not sure how that would work out on the, on the local level and the details of all of that as far as the, uh, the I haven't thought through all of that, the materials that would t take place and the finances of it all. I know that would be absolutely uh, difficult, but to say the least. But nevertheless, I, I would stand by the fact that it is a right of the people to do so. You know, Alan West, who's the head of the Republican Party in uh, Texas, made a comment uh, similarly, also, that, you know what, maybe it's time for people to go and do their own thing. Walter Williams, a, you know, you've had him on the show many times, yeah. wrote an article about 20 years ago, said, 20 years ago, said, maybe it's time for a divorce. And he meant separate, go our own ways. There's, there's one group of people that want to control other people, and there's another group of people that want to live free. So maybe it's time simply to separate and go our own ways. Now, that was 20 years ago, and I believe that he's exactly right. As a matter of fact, constitutional scholars of yesteryear all held out that it is, the, it is the right of people to secede or states to secede. For example, St. George Tucker was a law student with Thomas Jefferson, a constitutionalist at that period, wrote the first commentary on the Constitution. He held it as a, one of the prime principles that a people have a right to secede and go their own way and do their own thing. So also did William Rawl, who wrote a commentary on the Constitution, was published in 1825, and it was used at West Point. He talked completely about the possibilities and the right of people to secede and go their own way. So, you know, I, I think it's perfectly legitimate to do. But we don't see if something like that was possible and could happen, we don't have anyone to make it happen because the right or Republicans don't have the courage to do it. They are afraid of being called misogynists or, or um, 
Yeah. Uh, woman hater. Uh, yeah. So who would make that yeah, happen? Because the Republicans don't have the backbone to do it. That's true. And you know what? It's going to get worse before it gets any better. Yeah. Or if it does get any better, it's going to get a lot worse. Because if the Democrats actually take control in January, then they have a plan to, number one, have o open borders and legalize every illegal immigrant in here, which is upward of 20 million. And they already have caravans forming in Central and South America to come all the way up here, knowing that Biden is going to take over. So that's number one. They're going, to, they're going to dilute the population with more and more, make it more like California, which it will never have another Republican leadership in California. So also now in Arizona. So that's number one. Number two, they're going to add another, more states. Number three, they're going to get rid of the Electoral College so that middle America has, will have no voice whatsoever in any election. It will be California and New York, and that's it. Maybe the, maybe the candidates will stomp off in Chicago to tip their hat to the gangs. But that's about <laughs> it. Yeah. But as far as middle America, nothing. We'll have no voice. And that includes Texas as well. So, you know, if, if people better wake up and see what's going to happen here. And that's what the Democrats have slated. Plus change the federal judiciary, the Supreme Court. Yeah. Why? Well, because they want to just, they want to be, it's going to be a totalitarian system in which they tell us how to live. And that is not how our founders had intended, obviously. Do you recommend that conservative Christians and conservatives, um, Republicans and Others move away from California, New York. Well, I have. I, I would, if I were in California, I, I would get out. I mean, I, you know, I mean, it's, it's not going to change. Once you go down this track, as you're in, you got this this wild-eyed liberal governor who's going to shut you down and and tell you that tell the churches if you sing in a church, then you then you're going to be fined or you can be arrested or they're going to they're going to lock you down, whatever. Uh, as long as you have that kind of thing going on, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to, what else to do except p pick up arms. And I just, you know, I, I don't. I hesitate to say that about the government. Where will you recommend people go? I believe, I guess. No, I, I don't <laughs> know. You know. <laughs> you know what? That that is the question of the hour. Well, a lot of Californians are coming to Arizona, but they've changed the they've changed the politics in Arizona. And a lot of them are coming yeah. here to my home state where I am now in Texas. It's changing the politics of Texas. Yeah. So, I, I, don't, I mean, right now, everything is going, going all right here in the state of Texas, generally speaking. But that's all going to change. It's, that's not going to stay the same if California moves into Texas. That's, that, will, that will absolutely change. And so... People need to realize where we're going with all of this. And right now, even even a, a secession movement now would be, I think, would be extremely difficult. But if you wait another five to ten years to talk about it, I, I don't know. I think the game's all over. I think we might as well just put the chains on and and pay 90 percent of our money to, to the federal government so they can redistribute it to the poor communities. I was in Dallas uh, uh, a week or two ago today. Uh, well, not today, uh, tomorrow. And the driver was telling me that uh, a lot of people are moving there from California and other places, and they're bringing in the same liberal ideas and is taking over. And as a result, a lot of the people are moving out of the inner c cities there into the suburbs. And that's what happened in California. Right. And as a result of uh, most people moving to the suburbs, Los Angeles is became and San Francisco became a socialist became social cities and so it's going to have it happened in Oregon I remember living in Oregon for a while doing a radio show up there and a lot of Californians were moving up there and now Oregon is like a socialist state it's going to oh, happen in, in right. Texas as well I mean at some point don't we have That's to right. like shouldn't we like in our in the darkest hour Shouldn't we like stand up and do something? I mean, you can't keep oh, running. Good. Yes. No, it, no. People are going to have to stand up and say, "We're going to. We need to. I think at a state level, nullify the laws that come down. We if if we don't have the backbone to nullify 
a federal law. For example, uh, the, the Obamacare that came out several years ago, the Fed state of Texas and uh, any state should have said, no, we're not going to do it. We're not setting up the exchanges, and neither are the federal government, or is the federal government sending its agents here to set up the exchanges. We're not participating. They shouldn't have said that. But no, we were too weak to do it. So, but people are going to have to nullify. Now, they've nullified other things. For example, marijuana laws. The marijuana had been illegal in all these places, but there are many states that had nullified by not enforcing the marijuana laws. Why can't we do that regarding this? Yes, it can be done if people have the strength and the backbone to stand up. And so that's number one, start nullifying what comes out of the federal government. I, um, I, I've noticed that one of the things that I want to focus on this coming year, if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise, I want to talk about love. Okay. Because I noticed that in America today, when I was growing up, you would hear a lot about love, the love of God, and how we should treat one another. And yeah, right. people like Falwell and others who were standing up against evil, they were outspoken about it. And the people, it helped to encourage the people. But I don't hear those loud voices anymore about sin or about love or about God. It's like there's like no fight from the Christians or the Republicans, or anything. It's like, it's so weak. Don't we need a, uh, do we need a loud voice of people talking about God and love and sin? And because if you don't build your house on that foundation of love, you really don't have the strength to deal with evil. Well, you know, that's, that's really where the weakness of our country lies. And that is the pulpits and people standing for Christian principle and preaching an undiluted gospel. And that, of course, is love. And that would be also to point out that the problems of people is not economics. Right. It is not lack of opportunity. It is sin. And sin is the root of our problem. So if we can't get back to understanding the world through God's eyes and loving people enough to tell them the real root of the problem so that they can remove it through the blood of Christ, then we have no hope. Yeah. Bill, let me take a quick break. Back in a moment. Bill Lockwood is with me, folks. And I told you, one of the most smartest white men on this side of heaven. He should run for president. Uh, Bill, I, I want to uh, give give the folks your website and your um, writing for the Bible brand and all the good stuff. Yeah, thank you for that, Jesse. Well, I do have uh, the website is American Liberty with Bill Lockwood dot com. And uh, that, of course, has the articles on it uh, by myself and others as well. And then uh, there's a, a donate button on there if people want to contribute. Uh, but also uh, I have there are two uh, channels uh, that are YouTube channels, and that's uh, American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. That's a YouTube channel. And you could subscribe to that it has a subscribe button on it. And then I do a short, um, I, I call it writing for the Bible brand. It's, it's a short lesson where I take a Bible passage and I make application to what's going on in the country today and, and the world. So I call that writing for the Bible brand. That's also a, another YouTube channel. And I noticed while sitting on the horse, you're sitting on the horse while doing it. Do you, have you trained that horse to be right. still? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what? Yes. I mean, I, I have. I mean, you know what? One of the things that I do with horses is you have to have them stand tied. They have to learn to be patient. And so um, that was a, a weak point in my training years ago where I didn't make them stand tied at a young age. And soon enough, when they, when they get big, um, that can cause problems. And so they do get sometimes they get fidgety, but they you know, I, I do make them stand tied. And um, when well, I'm not sitting on them, of course, but they have to they have to know patience work. And I think horses need patience work just yeah. like people do. One, one, I want to squeeze in a few calls here for you if you have time. But one question sure, I want to be great. When I was growing up, I noticed that for the most part, exceptions to the rule, Christians had love and compassion for one another. It wasn't so easy for one Christian to just try to to try and destroy another. I want to ask, in your opinion, do Christians in America have love? 
Um, do they love their enemies in the way that when we were growing up? And uh, is that gone from the Christians now? Well, I, I know that many Christians still have that. I know them, and, and you do know some too, but for a large part of a majority of America, I think we have lost that uh, love for other people. Uh, and part of it, uh, there may be many causes, but we're becoming very, very, um, very jaded and very ugly with one another. Uh, we can't have a disagreement on anything without being very, very snarky and very, very, and, and the snarky is a very light way to put it. Sometimes people, I mean, you just look at a, a Twitter feed or a Facebook post, and you see people uh, telling everyone else to, you know, F you and do this. And do it. I mean, it's just like unbelievable how they do it. Now, that, they, don't, they, don't, they don't monitor that on Facebook. They don't, they don't write hurt on that. But they want, they, if you put something out there they don't like, you know, politically, they'll, they'll, they'll uh, erase that. But they'll monitor that. But, boy, I'll tell you what, they, I think they ought to be monitoring. The, but the language anyway is, is, I think, way over the top. And part of it, because people can sit around and not have to be face-to-face -face with people and not have to interact with people, so we're becoming very, very poor at interacting with people. And people think Christianity is all about, uh, I can love God and sit in my house and do my own thing, and I don't need to assemble with the brethren. I don't need to assemble with the church, even though Christ has commanded you to, to do that. Yeah. They say, I can be a faithful Christian. I can sit in my house, and I can get on my keyboard, and I can rip people up, you know, this is this is not Christianity. And I think you're right about that, that we become very, very ugly. Yeah, I've never seen before in my lifetime until, you know, this year, I guess, Christian attacking Christians as hard as the children of Satan are attacking Christians, and they just don't right. seem to mind destroying a Christian. You know, God said that we should pray for one another and not mm. attack. But the Christians today are attacking one another as much as the enemy of the Christian attacking one another. Well, you know what? I, I, I think that's right. Um, you know, in the New Testament, uh, Paul had continual debates with the Jews, but he didn't, he didn't get down personally and, and assault them and their integrity and, and what kind of people they were and call them names and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I yeah. mean, you can, you can stand for principle and truth, and you can have a debate and have a discussion and say this is right and that's wrong, but people, are, people become very, very personal. They, well, you're a racist, and that's the first thing that pops out of their mouth. Yeah. Well, if that's the way conversations go today. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a personal charge that no one can really know about my heart on those right. kinds of things yeah. at all. Yeah. But that's how they do it. Amazing. Well, you're a racist. Well, you're an Islamophobe. Uh, you, you're a, you hate Muslims. Well, okay, well, so we just lost the discussion. Yeah. There's no discussing anymore. Uh, amazing. Yeah. I want to go to Miles out of Staten Island, New York. Miles, you're on with, uh, Miles, you're on with Bill Lockwood. How do you do, Jesse and Bill? All this well, Miles. How are you? Hey, Miles. I'm pretty well, thank you. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I, I hear you guys are talking about, you know, capitalism, socialism, and I do want to start off by saying I do agree that, you know, socialistic principles, um, you know, aren't healthy for society for various reasons, a lot of the reasons that you guys already spoke about. But I think also one thing that the audience I feel needs to hear, and of course you guys can tell me if you agree or not, is that since humans are in, we're not infallible, right? Um, so any system that we create, whether that's capitalism, socialism, communism, can't be perfect. That's why utopias are not possible, because we aren't perfect beings. Now, I have heard you say, Jesse, that, you know, through God we could be made perfect, but I'm not necessarily convinced that, you know, we're not prone to be making mistakes. So, again, we build cars, infrastructures, and these things are great, but they're never perfect because, again, we're not perfect beings, so therefore the things that we create and utilize can't be perfect. And so you're saying that it's not about socialism? Yeah, it's not about socialism. It's not about capitalism. It's not about any of these systems necessarily. It's about people understanding that since we are going to make mistakes and the things that we create are always going to have some sort of flaws within them, these systems are going to have flaws. So 
you know, you can't think that you're going to implement socialism and things are going to get better. You can't think that we're going to implement a better version of capitalism and that things are just going to be peachy clean, right? There's always going to be issues, conflicts, problems, and et cetera. So that's what people need to start focusing on is just the fact that since we do make mistakes, these systems, these things that we use are always going to have issues with them. What do you say? That, how do you respond to that, Bill? Well, you know, I, I, thank you for calling, Miles. You know, and I, I would say that it's to one, in one part, I would agree that any any kind of system is going to have mistakes because people are going to be making mistakes, and that's obviously the case. Even though um, even though people are Christians, we're still going to we're still going to have some mistakes in it. However, I don't think that goes deep enough because some systems are actually born and bred in a system of atheism and socialism being one of them. Yeah. So it is bound not to work. There's a there's a huge difference. I can't, for example, I cannot say, well, s s slavery is is a system that has some flaws in it because it's just another system that has flaws, and so does capitalism. Well, <clears throat> no. Slavery is, slavery is a system that denies the very essence of man that we were made in God's image and live and born to be free and allowed to be free. And God allowed us to make decisions and slavery denies that. So I, I kind of hesitate on some of it simply because, yeah, there's mistakes everywhere, but some systems are actually <laughs> born in the gates of hell and other ones are not. And I don't see how socialism is a mistake because it's the whole thing is crazy and it can never work. I don't care how perfect you are. Socialism cannot work. And it's just nothing good about that at all, from what I can tell. But the, so my thing is with that is even under capitalism, at least how we have it in America, there's still a lot of socialistic principles interwoven within it. But at least and you so have a like chance never, of making it right. But with socialism, it can never be made right. See, but that's the thing, Justin. You can't make capitalism, quote unquote, right. Why not? Because, because, because going back to what um, you know, we're sort of talking about discussing right now is but that. But there's nothing about we, socialism that can be right. Am I right about that, Bill? Well, you know, let me say this. Uh, I, I think you're right you about that. There's nothing about socialism that's right. What, uh, and I, I agree with Miles that we have socialistic principles interwoven in capitalism. Th that that is because we've been going down the socialistic pathway for 150 years, and myself, Jesse, nor Miles has ever lived in a system that is free from the socialistic men uh, principles that have been put in place and interwoven and kind of connected onto capitalism like some big giant leech. As the country was founded with the economic principles, that would be different. But boy, about the 1900 period, radically changed. So I have never seen a system of capitalism that was like our founding fathers set up. Yeah. I have never seen it, nor has anybody alike today. Thank you, Marl. Let me go to Brian out of Texas. Uh, Brian, you're on with Bill Lockwood. Thank you for calling. Thank you for having me, Jesse, and happy holidays to you and Bill. Thank you, um, Brian. No problem. Thank you. Thank I, you. I always appreciate when we have Bill on because he always comes with good info. And I live in Texas as well, um, but he kind of just sent out a little tornado warning to a Texan just now, you know, with being afraid. Texas needs to be afraid. I never thought that I would hear that, you know, with Texas being a Lone Star state, that we too are at risk for something like this. But I also I also want to uh, just uh, say how I, I truly admire how Bill can stay so open to all of this, uh, truly a grace of God. But I think that what we need to remember is that, like, the devil comes in many disguises, and he's going to be in every single ism that's out there. You know what I'm saying? What we need to remember is, is that the, the problem is, is that, Without God, it means you don't have a father, and that's what they're doing. They're removing the father from everything, and we will never, like, we will never be able to turn around from that if we don't, if we don't get people to come back to God. What do you say, that to Bill? I, I think he's exactly right. I think that's uh, first of all, thank you for calling and appreciate your comment. I, you know what? I think that's exactly right. I, I have a thought for a long time that you know we we can we. 
can avoid socialism and we can put it off in America and we can run back toward the Constitution. But as our founding fathers themselves said, the Constitution will not work for an immoral and ungodly and irreligious people. And they meant we have to have Christianity as its base, which means exactly uh, what, what is just stated. And that is we have to have we have to have Christian homes and we have to have Christian fathers and we have to have a general repentance in this country and going back to Christ and going back to biblical values or there is no hope. And I think that he's exactly right on that. Yeah, amazing. And, and, you, and you know what else, uh, Bill, to, to add to the point that you just made, how it's all written inside of the Constitution in that way, this goes into everything that you preach, Jesse, how, you know, not having the father in the home and not having that, that source of love in the family is going to be depriving you of, of said thing, you know. And I was I was on that side of things for a long time until I woke up. And when I look back, I had all my all my values were conservative. I just didn't recognize them for what they were. And I think one of the key things that helped me come out of that was my ability to understand the English language and to read and to be able to speak it. And that's another thing I think is the biggest issue, in the mainly in the black community, is that English is – frowned upon proper english is frowned upon and so therefore your level of understanding is always and forever going to be limited because you don't speak the language amazing you're absolutely right man that's a, a big part of the problem as well uh Bill, thank you um brian for your call i appreciate it uh last word bill well listen i just want to say uh, tell brian and miles and those people thank you for calling i appreciate their participation. But listen, I hope you have a great new year, Jesse. I know that um, things look dismal in some respects, but I know that you have a great show and and I uh, wish you Godspeed with it, that you get the message out. And I know you're going to emphasize love and the love of Christ in the new year. Yeah. And I hope that they might continue so doing it. Even if you move to Texas one day, that'd be great to do. So right that'd here. be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I want to have you, when you come back uh, starting this year, I want uh, your prediction, if you have it, get ready and give us your prediction for next year when you return. Um, give out your website again so the folks can get it. Yeah, you bet. Thank you for that. It's American Liberty with Bill Lockwood dot com. And the uh, web, that's the website. <clears throat> and then the radio show is called the same. And it's out of Wichita Falls on uh, News Talk 1290. But that's also uh, I have a, 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 w a web channel. Uh, or rather a YouTube channel, and it's called American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. And then I have another one called Writing for the Bible Brand. So all of that is on, on those sites as well. And then I have, of course, Iowa Park Church of Christ, iowaparkcoc.org, and I have a lot of uh, material on there, and my sermons are up there, and then uh, biblical material and articles and so forth. So uh, all of those. Do you Are you going to, to uh, Washington, D.C. for January 6th, support of the president? No, you know what? I, I I would like to go. I've been out of uh, out of the saddle, so to speak, for uh, already so much this year from from school teaching, and I hate to be gone uh, the first week I get back. Uh, my sister, I believe, is going, however, and uh, Christy, so she's going to go, and I, she's all excited to go. And I so um, at any rate, I think she's going to go with some friends. They're just planning to go, so I'm really happy for her. But that would be great. Are you going? I'm not going to be able to make it either, but I do know a lot of folks who are going, they, they will be there. So I wish I could be there, but my yep. schedule just won't let it happen. Uh, Bill, can you take one more call? Sure, absolutely. You, you, you bet. Okay. Bell is a first-time caller out of New York City. Oh, they just hung up. Oh, they just hung up, Bill. They they want to know, okay. do you think that, Bill, uh, that uh, Joe Biden will pass uh, a health care bill for all or some, something like that? Well, you know, he's, I think he's going to try to add, indeed add on what Obama has already started. I, I don't think that he's going to turn back from that. He's going to strengthen that regardless of what happens in Georgia. I think he, that's going to get accomplished. I do believe that. Amazing. Bill, thank you so much. Yeah. Happy New Year to you and your family. And I hope your wife is well real soon and let her know. We will remember her in prayer. Thank you so much for that, Jesse Lee. Appreciate you. And listen, the Lord bless your program this year. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Bill Lockwood, folks, check him out. American Liberty with Bill Lockwood. 
You don't want to miss it. It's amazing. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson radio show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it. 